Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. With this video, we are going to start a new playlist called Azure Data Factory Playlist, where we will be learning about concepts related to Azure Data Factory from basics. So if you are a beginner, this playlist will be very helpful to you. Or if you want to switch your career to data engineering roles, then you can leverage this playlist. Okay. So we will start with the overview of data factory. So what is data factory? Let me go to the next slide. So Azure data factory is a cloud based data integration service that allows us to create schedule and orchestrate our ETL or ELT workflows at scale. So this is the official definition of what Azure Data Factory is. Okay, so let's try to understand this by segregating each and every keywords here. Okay, so first of all, what is Azure Data Factory? It is a cloud-based data integration service. Why cloud-based? Because it is a service that is delivered by Azure, which is nothing but the cloud platform provided by Microsoft. Okay, so Azure is the cloud platform provided by Microsoft. Okay, Microsoft. So basically earlier we had something called SSIS, which is SQL Server Integration Service. This was a ETL tool provided by Microsoft, but it was on-premise tool, which was helpful to perform the ETL jobs. So now we have ADF in place, which is present in the Azure cloud. So does it mean that SSIS is replaced by ADF? No, it's nothing like SSIS has been decommissioned and ADF has replaced it. People still use SSIS. There are projects which are fully functioning in SSIS. However, we have an additional capability to use the cloud service of Azure, which is a better version, we can say. So I'm not going deep inside what is the difference between SSIS and ADF, but we will learn what is ADF and what are its capabilities okay so now coming to data integration service so as we discussed adf is an etl tool or elt tool which means it is responsible to perform extraction and it allows us to perform transformation on top of the data that we extracted and then we can load the data into our destination okay so since it is not only responsible to move the data, it also allows us to transform the data. So that's why instead of calling it as data movement tool, we can call it as data integration service because it helps us to ingest the data and transform the data and then perform the loading of the data. So that's why we call it integration tool instead of just the movement tool. Okay. So how do we achieve the target of integrating the data? It's by creating, scheduling and orchestrating our ETL workflows at scale. So we have an option to create the workflow, which is nothing but pipelines in ADF term. So we can create our ADF pipelines, which is responsible to perform certain operations. Then we can schedule that pipeline to run on a daily basis or monthly basis. So you can visualize like this, we can create pipeline, which is nothing but set of activities. Okay. We will talk about everything in details in upcoming videos, but you can just imagine like it is a pipeline, which is responsible for copying data from some data store, suppose SQL server data store to Azure data lake uh, data store. Okay. So we are copying from one source to sync. And once it is copied, then suppose we want to transform some format of few of the columns, then we can use data flow uh, activity to perform the data transformation or we can call a data a bricks notebook to create data frame on top of the data present in ADLS or we can create some power bi reports on top of the data present in ADLS so that we can take some business decisions by analyzing and visualizing this data so usually data analysis is performed by by data analysts okay and then on top of it, data scientist will predict the future by using the tools related to AI ML. So basically the first step is what data engineers perform, which is to extract, transform and load the data. Okay. So basically by creating pipelines like this, we are trying to orchestrate or arrange our ETL workflows. So I hope you got little bit idea about what data factory is. Now let's talk about what are the capabilities of Azure Data Factory. 
So it allows us to create data driven workflows which helps to move the data between on-premise data stores or cloud data stores. Suppose we want to load the data from on-premise SQL Server to Azure Blob Storage. Then we can easily do that or we can also move the data from cloud to cloud which means suppose we have data in Salesforce or uh, some SAP system and we want to load it into Azure SQL Server then also we have the capability to do that using Azure Data Factory pipelines. So basically we can move the data between cloud to cloud or on-premise to cloud or on-premise to on-premise as well with the help of ADF pipelines. Now coming to second point, it also allows us to perform data transformation using Dataflow. So in ADF, we have a component called Dataflow, which is a very well-known data transformation tool, which runs on top of Spark cluster to transform the data. So we will see everything practically as well, but just understand that Dataflow is a tool that helps us to transform the data, which is which is one of the services of ADF. Okay. Now coming to third point, ADF allows us to monitor and manage workflows. So as we discussed, we can create the pipelines and we can schedule the pipelines with the help of triggers. So ADF allows us to monitor these pipeline runs and the trigger runs. So we have the capability to monitor and manage the pipeline and trigger execution as well inside ADF. Now coming to fourth point, we can also lift and shift existing SSIS package and we can run them inside ADF. So we can run SSIS package with the help of Azure SSIS integration runtime. Okay. Now coming to last point, ADF also allows creating CI CD pipelines with GitHub enabled. Okay. So as we know, GitHub is a DevOps tool which helps in version controlling, right? Version controlling, which means we can save each version of our updated code in GitHub itself by integrating ADF with GitHub. Okay. So when we enable Git, multiple developers can work together in same ADF by creating their own local branches. And then once the development is done, they can merge their code into the main branch so that everyone has the access to it. Okay. So basically ADF helps to continuously integrate and deliver our code with the help of integration with Git. So these are the main highlights of ADF. There are many things that we can achieve using this ETL tool. Okay. So now moving on to the next slide. So ADF is a code free ETL service which helps us to ingest the data. So the movement of data is possible between multiple clouds or between cloud and on-premise as we discussed. Also ADF has 100 plus native connectors. So when you want to move the data, you need something called linked service. So linked service is the place where we store the connection related information of any source. So when we create the linked service in ADF, we have the option to select from 100 plus connectors, which means ADF is capable to move the data between 100 plus data stores. Okay. So now ADF is serverless and auto scale, which means you can create your pipelines, you can transform and visualize the data, but nowhere you have to think about anything related to infrastructure provisioning or managing the servers. Everything is done by Azure itself. And also ADF is auto scalable, which means it adjusts the capacity based on the amount of data that is getting extracted. So it can automatically scale up or down based on the amount of data that we are fetching. So as we discussed, it's a code free platform. So we can use wizard or we can use copy activity tiles for a quick copy jobs. So majority of our task is done just by dragging and dropping the activities and providing the details into those activities and connecting all the activities in the desired way to achieve the requirement. Now coming to control flow. So we can design our code free data pipelines. 
and also we can create the pipelines with the help of SDKs, which means Software Development Kit. So for example, ADF supports .NET or Python SDK. So if you are well aware of .NET coding, you can create the pipelines with the help of .NET SDK as well. And we can obviously utilize the workflow constructs, which means the components inside the pipelines. For example, if you want to create some loops, you can use the for each activity inside ADF pipeline. If you want conditional execution, you can create if block to perform some operation based on conditions. So there are lots of things we will talk about everything in details um, practically by creating ADF pipelines in upcoming videos. So don't worry about it. Now coming to data flow, as we discussed, data flow is the data transformation tool inside ADF, which is also code free. We have lots of transformations available inside data flow. For example, select transformation, join transformation, union, filter, lots of transformations are present inside data flow with the help of which we can transform the data according to our need. So data flow executes on Apache Spark cluster. So before creating the data flow, we need to spin up that cluster. Now coming to second point. In ADF, we have three kinds of integration runtime. First one is Azure integration runtime, then self-hosted integration runtime and SSIS integration runtime. When we talk about data flow, it only supports Azure integration runtime. By default, Azure integration runtime is auto scalable, but we have an option to create a new Azure integration runtime and we can scale that horizontally, which means we can scale in and scale out by selecting the compute size as small or medium or large. So if we select small compute size, which means number of nodes will be less. And if we select large, the number of nodes will be more. So don't worry about it. We will see everything in details. And also we can generate the data flow with the help of SDK. And as we know, it can be helpful for data engineers and data analysts to transform and analyze the data. Now coming to scheduling part. So to schedule our pipeline, we can build triggers and we can schedule it based on the wall clock or based on some events. Suppose if a file arrives in my blob storage, then I need to trigger this pipeline. So based on some event also, we can uh, trigger a pipeline. And also based on tumbling windows, we can create the trigger. What it means is, suppose I want to run a pipeline. Once another pipeline has been completed successfully, if we have such kind of requirement, then we can go ahead with tumbling window triggers. So we will see everything practically in upcoming videos. So now coming to monitor part. So we can monitor the active pipelines as well as we can also uh, view the history of the pipeline execution. So not only pipelines, we can also monitor the activities present inside the pipeline, which activity passed and which activity failed and due to which reason it failed. We can also build some error logging capability based on the errors that we receive. Similarly, we can also monitor data flow execution and we can also check which activity or which transformation took the least time and which transformation took the most of the time of execution. And we can also create alerts and notification. Suppose my pipeline failed and once it is failed, I want to get email notification. So we have the option to do that as well. Okay. Okay. So moving on. So this is a simple block diagram of how ADF pipeline works. So this block diagram is to copy a single file and this one is to copy multiple files. So you can see ADF pipeline is responsible to move the data from source to sync. So in this case, our source is a blob storage, which has the file in CSV format and the sync is nothing but SQL server where the data will reside in a table. Although pipeline refers to set of activities in ADF, but, but a pipeline can also be created by only one simple copy activity as well. So in order to copy data from source to sync, we need two data sets. One data set will be for source and the other data set will be pointing to the sync. So data set is created on top of linked service, which defines the connection string 
of that particular data store. So the first image is responsible to move the data from CSV file to SQL Server. But if our requirement is to move multiple files to multiple tables, then what we need to do is we need to parameterize our data set. So once we parameterize the data set, it will dynamically fetch the source file names and it will run the copy activity. And in the sync also, we need to have parameterized data set that will dynamically create the sync tables. Okay. So this is just an overview of the architecture of ADF pipeline. Moving on. So here you can see how the pipeline really looks like. It's just a simple pipeline with a single activity that is a copy activity where we need to define what is the source data set, what is the sync data set and we can also define the mapping between source schema and sync schema. So we will learn about each and every activities in details. Now coming to the second image, this is how the set of activities looks like. You can uh, combine lots of activities together to create a meaningful pipeline. So you can call one activity after another like this by combining it with uh, a conditional path. And suppose if two activities are not having any dependency on each other, then we can also run them in parallel. So this is how we can create our pipeline based on the requirement that we have. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you got an idea of what Azure Data Factory is and what it is capable of doing. In upcoming videos, we will learn more about ADF. So please stay tuned and please like the video and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you.